Hi everyone, this is Doc Wisdom and today we will talk about lava and lava flows. But before, subscribe to my channel, share and now enjoy this new video. Probably lava flows are the most iconic and easy to see products of uh, volcanic activity. The word lava is from Naples dialect to indicate a mud torrent and after the eruption of Vesuvius of 1631 was adopted the word uh, lava of fire. It is pouring gas, otherwise we had uh, explosive uh, activity. In fact, we can define lava as magma without gas. In a lava flow we can recognize several elements. A surface covered in debris, below a vesicle part, and then a massive part, and then again a debris part. Longitudinally, there is a vent from where lava is emitted, a lava channel, and a front. A channel is formed by two walls and a central part where lava can flow. Longitudinally, we can recognize also a different rheology. If we are far from the vent, lava is colder, so more solid, so more viscous. What's viscosity? Viscosity is the property of a material to oppose to the movement. Viscosity of lava depends on internal frictions. It depends on the internal bond that is uh, inversely proportional to the temperature. So higher temperature, lower viscosity. But viscosity depends also on the content in silica, because silicon has a covalent bond instead of a weaker ionic bond uh, like a lot of elements. So as I said many times, uh, silica make a lot of uh, chains single, double, and so on. Chemical bond of chains are more free to move with high temperature. So it means that R is a temperature, more fluid is lava, so it's less viscous. Temperature depends also on the origin of magma, but this is too complicated and too long to explain now. So if you want, uh, I can uh, make uh, another video about this. We talked about lava, but not yet about lava flows. Lava moves just because of gravity. Try to imagine to have an inclined plan with a fluid on it. This fluid will move uh, just because of gravity. This force can be decomposed in a part perpendicular to the plan and another one uh, parallel to the plan. If the plane is vertical, the perpendicular force is zero and the vertical will coincide with the gravity. If the plane is horizontal, the parallel force is zero, so it means that the fluid shouldn't move. It moves uh, anyway because of a fluidostatic uh, force. But the question is that this fluid, that is lava, can't move if there is not uh, a um, certain stress. So it means that rheology changes uh, depending on the stress applied. This is why lava is not a Newtonian fluid. Not Newtonian fluids are those fluids that can change uh, the rheology, the behavior, um, depending on the stress applied. Like if you, uh, if you apply a stress, they, um, they can react uh, as a fluid or as a solid. I said that lava flows uh, inside a channel formed by lava because it cools down first externally. Because of the friction with the walls of this channel, uh, lava will be slower on the sides and faster on the center. So the fluid on the sides will be more viscous than the fluid in the center. And close to the vent, what does it happen? When lava comes out, first it will create a very thin deposit because uh, uh, temperature is higher, so viscosity is lower. Obviously, it depends also on the chemistry of lava, but quite fast lava loses heat, so viscosity rises up and the deposit will be thicker. Lava loses heat also because of uh, emission of uh, thermal energy in the form of uh, heat radiation. You know the light emitted by lava? We are talking about this. From white light emitted close to the vent, to orange and then red and then no light from 1200 degrees celsius to 800 and then no light everything happens very close to the vent lava create a thin layer externally because it loses uh, heat but internal part uh, remains uh, quite warm externally lava forms uh, a solid layer that will become thicker while lava flows 
because it breaks, so it exposes warmer parts that become colder and so on. And the process will, uh, will go on. Obviously, considering that the heat is emitted from internal part to external part, this process will be faster externally. So this crust will form first outside and on the borders. But lava in contact with colder borders will solidify. So inside channel there will be more solid lava, so a smaller channel. But if we have a smaller channel, the internal level of lava is higher. Slowly the process will bring to the formation of a channel with higher border and then if the process will continue to the formation of a lava tube. The shape of the tube is perfect to maintain the thermal energy inside. In this way the thermal energy will remain almost the same thanks to the shape of, uh, of the tube that is cylindrical. At the end of the emission, the shape of the channel will be different because of uh, the lower level of lava. It will be with a lower central part because uh, the blocks can support by themselves so they will collapse. Lava moves uh, following the morphology. So if the morphology is uh, steep, lava is faster. If the morphology is flatter, lava is slower. But if it moves faster, uh, stress uh, is uh, higher, so lava it breaks more. Considering movements of lava that internally are more than externally or at least easier, lava breaks by itself, so we have a breccia structure when we are farther from the vent and a more harmonious structure when we are closer. And more fractures and fissures uh, we have, faster will be the cooling down. So there will be more blocks and we have the formation of a kind of lava called AA. When we have a colder magma or a magma richer in silica, viscosity is higher so plasticity is lower, so lava can break closer to the vent. As I anticipated there are two kind of flows. One is called AA, the other one is called Pahoehoe. Pahoehoe is typical in Hawaii, is characterized by high temperature and fluidity and very regular forms like ropes and very thin layers. Ropes are because there is a plastic crust that follows the, the movements of uh, the lower um, fluid layer so it falls and compress. At the end of the emission the shape uh, remains uh, quite the same and it doesn't collapse instead of the other one. It's easier to see it in flat areas uh, like shield volcanoes like in Hawaii. Talking about AA lava is very typical uh, here where I am on Mount Etna. The thickness is much higher than uh, Pahoehoe one. All around the fluid part there are blocks because blocks are brought by the fluid part. Also below uh, in uh, contact uh, with, uh, with the ground uh, there are blocks because blocks on the front uh, they roll down and lava pass on the blocks. There are several formations on a lavic field. One of the most uh, famous is a tree mold. When lava surrounds a tree, lava cools down and the heat loses by lava is used to make evaporate uh, water in the tree that dies. When the tree disappears remains the shape of the tree like a hole. Another typical formation is uh, overpressure mound. This particular formation is when lava flows uh, in a tube. But considering that lava flows uh, uh, on a slope, when it arrives uh, on a flat zone it slows down. But lava behind continue to flow. So here we have uh, an overpressure that will bring lava to break the crust uh, forming uh, other uh, lava flows, secondary lava flows, till pressure will decrease. So guys I hope that you like this uh, new video. I love volcanoes, in fact I live uh, at the base of uh, an active one, Mount Etna. So if you like this new video, thumb up, leave a comment, share, subscribe to my channel and follow us on the Facebook page Learning Geology. Big ciao from Doc Wisdom. See you next time.